Hello everybody, my name is Goodboy and welcome to a Dota 2 News Bite on how Trump's executive order travel ban could massively impact the TI7 event, including seeing it moved to another country. Many of you may have noticed that earlier in 2017, Donald Trump issued an executive order banning travel from certain Muslim-majority countries amid security concerns. This had a massive uh, implications worldwide and provoked a huge amount of outcry, particularly uh, in the US, with seven for all, uh, million people taking part in some kind of protest against such bans. These bans had huge implications and even on Valve directly themselves. And as Gabe Newell made these comments, we have people who work for Valve who can't go home. They've been here for years. They pay taxes, they cheer for New England at the Super Bowl, and we try not to hold that against them. But you know, they can't leave the country. So there's some event outside the country, and for the first time, we say, wait, they can't go because they can't get back. So that's a problem, not just for these hypothetical future employees, but actual Valve employees. So yeah, that's a concern for us. As luck would have it, Valve's fears and many other people's fears were relieved when a US judge overturned the travel ban, stating that it was unconstitutional. Donald Trump naturally, of course, was extremely upset with this and threatened to issue another executive order ensuring that a new ban would be brought into place. He offered to do that recently, but his current self-set deadline has been expired, so when we will see another travel ban remains to be questioned. However, for the time being, it has left a huge deal of uncertainty that has implications for Dota and in particular the International 2017 event. One of the biggest problems that generally the uh, International event has had is actually visa restrictions being extremely problematic. Valve's Eric Johnson said that visa restrictions are already a problem for the tournament, adding that senior politicians in Washington state had pulled strings in order to legally get the players through the complex system. Last year's TI6 event, several uh, Southeast Asian teams struggled to get visa applications after the US government changed how it recognized eSports and the kind of visa you'd be required to get it done. Luckily, those teams managed to make it, and that was a great relief, and it was wonderful to see them able to actually compete. So, unfortunately, esports is still plagued with a major issue, and that is lack, lack of recognition, with a looming potential another travel ban soon, and indeed the general fact that it's just so hard to get players into the US on appropriate visas is having making Valve seriously reconsider where it's going to place the venue. Gabe Newell said this generally about the process of getting players into the US. If you're an opera singer, it's really easy to get a visa. Like the State Department kind of understands who these people are. If you're a Nobel Prize winner, they kind of know who you are. When you're an unemployed teenager without strong ties to the US, it's more challenging. And generally that is the problem I think we see a lot of the time with esports. Is that unfortunately you get talented individuals who do insane actions per minute and have just incredible Jedi-like reflexes when playing this game. They are outstanding athletes who have an incredible talent and deserve to recognize for it. But unfortunately, a lot of these are quite young, under 20 young, and despite their incredible talents, often struggle to be recognized for the brilliance that they are. And so when it comes to competing in massive events with huge prizes, the US government can be extremely skeptical about their intentions. So the big question that looms is, can the US hold the event? And if they can't, what will happen to the international? Valve's Eric Johnson said at a round, ta a round table, we're going to run the event no matter what. Ideally, we'd run it here in Seattle because it has a bunch of advantages being close to our office. But the event is going to happen. So yes, if it became too difficult, we'd find a way. Other potential venues include Cologne in Germany, where the first ever international event was held. But generally speaking, this kind of uh, uh, phenomenon where we see um, the threat of travel bans and increasing visa restrictions, of course, only continue to plague 
an already challenging vent to hold, which is TI7. And naturally, of course, many of us will be relieved to hear that uh, Valve will host the event no matter what. But actually, taking it outside of the US is very, very strongly on the cards this year. I think from my own personal point of view, and, I, and I, you know, I don't want to get too political. Um, I personally felt the Donald Trump travel ban was a little bit severe. I can understand exactly where uh, he's coming from and the viewpoint behind it in terms of security concerns, of course, are a legitimate uh, reason. But nonetheless, I think an outright complete travel ban did strike me as a little bit excessive. I, I think when it starts hitting us home in places where it's really, really important to us, so when we know people who are directly affected by it, or more appropriately, the fact that it could have a completely chaotic effect on the international itself. I think it, it starts to hit home as something that seems, in my opinion, a little bit excessive. Um, and I think I think an outright ban just to me seems just a little bit too severe to, in order to get what you're trying to achieve. Um, the biggest thing for me, though, is actually when. Now, luckily, Donald Trump has said that he'll try and do something sooner rather than later, and that's helpful. The biggest fear would be if an executive order got issued a week before the event where Valve has no real chance of moving the event from Seattle to another location. In a, in a scenario like that, that could be absolutely devastating because that could seriously hinder the movement of many pro players wanting to attend and would be completely unfair. So with that in mind, of course, the uncertainty is a big problem. I think the biggest thing that I would like to see is that for whatever these security concerns are, that the Trump administration resolve them quickly and introduce their new extreme vetting system, whatever that is, sharpish. So at least that way we have a known unquant known quantity, even if it's a little bit unfair. Or very unfair, depending on how you see it. I think, to be honest, though, the idea of um, the international leaving the US and being held, hosted in, in another geographical location in the world would, wouldn't to me be actually a total disaster. Um, I understand why they host it in Seattle. It makes complete sense. It's completely logical. Logistically, it's one of the best places to hold, hold it. But I think, you know, with it being the international, I thought it would be quite interesting to see it held in other places, you know, like Shanghai or London, <laughs> for example. Um, you know, or back in Germany or Dubai or indeed a plethora of other places, Manila, you know, the Kuala Lumpur, the list goes on, really. Um, so hosting it, I think generally hosting it outside um, the US wouldn't wouldn't be a totally terrible thing, albeit somewhat frustrating for Valve, certainly directly. Um, but that being said, of course, I don't think the reason why they should do that is simply because they're being screwed over by policies from the US government. So, um, so you know, I, th I think most people would probably agree with that. Um, so with that being said, I think the biggest thing is I would like to now hear back from you and what you think about it. What do you think of the travel ban? What do you think of um, the implications of how it could affect the Dota game? And perhaps most importantly, what you'd think about seeing the event moved elsewhere um, for the purposes of the main event. So uh, I think... I would love to hear back from you all. Please, of course, do uh, make your comments, see what you, you think. And uh, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, of course, by all means, do express those opinions in the comments below. And if you feel like it, please do give the video a like. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much. That's your latest Dota 2 news. See you later. Goodbye. Thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share it. If you'd like more videos with the same content or maybe something a bit different, please follow the video links below.